It's the 18th hole, and my 15-year-old son, AJ, walks up to the green. He takes his time eyeing his ball, and it's lying about 25 feet from the hole. It's a double break that requires quite a bit of an uphill putt. He needs to hole it to win his bet with me. I follow him all the way around the green as he squats behind the ball to take a look at the slope. He's carefully calculating how he's going to make this putt. He is determined to show up the old man for the, for the first time in many years of us playing together. And I kind of hover around him. I'm enjoying his tension. I decide to give him a little lesson in the importance of managing his mental game. And I ask him, so AJ, when you take the putter back, do you breathe in or do you hold your breath? <laughs> I laugh and smile and he sends me mental daggers you know, through his eyes like kids do. He's trying not to think of how he breathes and, and I know it throws his concentration off and I notice his body language, it just reeks of tension and he, and he tries to refocus from that. Flash backwards in time for a moment with me, and I've been playing and teaching AJ golf since he was three years old. Before that, I actually pushed him around on the course in a jogger's baby carriage while I played. Heck, I figured it was the only way I was going to go get some playing time on the occasional weekends that, that uh, I was able to, and, and he seemed to enjoy it. I'll never forget the crazy things I did to keep him asleep or entertain as he, as to try to keep him quiet on the course, right? I'm dancing around and from a distance, I'm sure the other golfers probably thought I was nuts or, or crazy doing these dances and whatnot to, to, to keep him quiet. <laughs> you know, come to think of it, those times are really instrumental in my learning how to deal with distractions and still stay focused on my game. And amazingly, I continue to play at a high level with him in the baby cart there. Did you know that Tiger Woods' dad purposely would yell and throw clubs in front of him while he was swinging to teach him that famous focusing ability that he's known for? But I'm off the topic here. You know, up until about the age of 12, AJ actually listened to me and would go hang on every word that I would say about golf. I started with, started with a very simple swing and it, and it served him really well for the many years we were playing together. Then he talks fondly of uh, how we drive the golf cart in crazy ways and you know, always celebrate another outing at the course with a tall soda at the end, beer for me, you know, at the 19th hole they call it. And then something happened. AJ hit that age where all of a sudden he knows everything. His game started to get better. And I could see a wall come up, a wall, you know, anytime I'd talk about the mental game of golf. In his mind, yeah, I think it was just a matter of him, he thought it was just a matter of him playing and practicing more, and he'd seen the beginnings of improvement from that formula. What does he need a mental game, you know? Never mind the fact that I write a blog for over 10,000 golfers every week. Never mind that I've worked with hundreds of kids and elite athletes from all over the world on their mental game. Never mind the fact that I took my own golf handicap down to a five, shot a one under par and a hole in one, all using my without practice techniques. No, never mind all that. I'm just dad. And I don't know anything, right? Sound familiar? Flash forward back to that 18th hole where he had, where he had challenged me to a high stakes bet. You know, if he won, I'd owe him some new Nike shoes, and if I won, he'd have to wash my car 10 times, and he really wanted those shoes bad. And I'm just grinning at him as he walks all around the putt, and he's taking an unusually long time to line it up. I know that he's inside, he's a bowl of jello, and his, looks like, his legs look like they're just gonna give out from under him at any moment. And he takes the, the putter back very hesitantly, ends up leaving himself a four-footer. And I joke with him that I'm looking forward to a very, very clean car in the next year. And I remind him about how much pressure there is on this putt. He ends up missing the putt, and I don't say a word. We walk to the car in silence. You know, I know to let him process things like this his way. I turn the radio on in the car, his favorite station. I'm trying to break the tension as we drive home. A few weeks later, he comes over to me, tells me he's ready to learn about the mental game, and we get going in earnest. And I'm happy to report today, as I tell you this story, AJ's earned a scholarship to play golf at the college of his choice. 
He's a fine, upstanding, moral young man who impressed the college coach, and not only with his golf skills, but with his personality and his character, right? As parents, we learn the kids need to get their lessons in a way that works for them. After working with hundreds of youth athletes one-on-one -on -one and, on and online, I've learned that it all starts with their ability to deal with pressure. I've developed a six-step process to master that pressure, and it's one of the key elements that I tackle in the Mental Toughness Academy online training. Join me in the winner's circle inside. I'm Craig Sigal, your Mental Toughness Trainer.